Hi guys, I'm sorry it's been a while since I've made a video for you. I know I've uploaded some shorts, but uh, it's been a busy time in Scotland. And there are quite a lot of things that I need to tell you about. Quite a lot of changes taking place. Um, mostly happy, some a little sad. And I'll explain all of that to you as uh, we go through this video. Now, this is a compilation of some of the things that we did during the summer hauls. And it's going to cover from the time we uh, finished in Scotland in late June. Um, obviously, you've seen some of my videos over the summer. These are some of the other clips that you won't have seen. Um, some added little bits, a trip to pub quirky which was a small vehicle campus facebook group meetup and that was brilliant and that was held at um devices and then uh, a trip to watch it in somerset uh, a little trip to would you come in the moor which i showed you the full video of so there's just some photos there anyway um this is the trip along the locks at devices and Pub Quirky took place on the weekend of the 9th of August and we all met up there. Now before that, way back in May, I went to Glen Buckty for a meetup with my Scottish friends, uh, Cecilia and Greg and David and Lindsay Benison, who are on YouTube as Desmond's Donders. Go and check them out if you haven't already. They're a great channel and uh, i met up with those along came a new friend gillian uh, from the statutory uh, air in uh, wallyford near edinburgh and we were also joined at that time by philip price who runs the group small vehicle campers unfortunately phil had uh, recently lost his wife uh, when he came up Chris, who was also a friend, I'd met them at Dunbeath in Scotland on a harbour on a wet, windy day a couple of years previously. And they'd taken pity on me, invited me in for a cup of tea and to get warm in front of their wood burner in their gorgeous converted van, the Dusty Nook. Um, so uh, we did that meet up in May and then obviously we all went off and did our own things uh phil went back to wiltshire Gillian back to edinburgh lindsay and david live in scotland and uh we've uh, i've seen cecilia and greg a couple of times since um and also lindsay and david and you will have seen that um i have featured them in some of my videos during uh my time in scotland uh and i've also been on their channel um having walks with Lindsay and the doggies. Anyway, Phil and I did a few car camps together over the summer and some of those have featured on the channel. They were at Exmouth and Tintagel and one at Woodycombe. And then uh, Pub Quirky took place on the 9th of August and it was a lovely group. I can honestly say they were a brilliant bunch of people and we really all hit it off there were as many dogs as humans uh, that's little daisy she was gorgeous and she belongs to the lovely ali who runs a dog walking service and has a field that um, you can rent out to walk your own dog and that's based in stroud and um, we all had a fantastic time we really gelled together as a group uh, had lots of late nights around the fire, lovely meal at the pub, a Chinese takeaway one night. We really spoiled ourselves. Um, there was much merriment, much chatting, lots of fun, some walks, shopping. And to be honest, uh, ever since August, we have all chatted on Facebook on a regular basis and have all become friends. And that is just lovely. And that was actually my first ever proper um, group meet up with people I didn't already know. The only person I knew was Phil. So there's a couple of photos here from Widdicombe and then Watch It. Now our visit to Watch It, oh we were so lucky, the sun shone and it was a lovely day. 
Um, we did an overnight in the car park on the seafront, which was free from, I think it was 6 p.m. to 8 a.m. And then we stuck some money in next morning and had a few more hours and a breakfast. And that was great. And lovely little place, lovely harbour. And so um, you can see my little wander around now. Um, great little pub right on the harbour. Some really quirky little shops up through uh, the one street that uh, runs down from, well, it's the town, basically. Um, there's a co-op and some lovely little craft shops and things like that, gift shops. Um, yeah, so we had a great time there. And uh, by this time, I decided that I actually quite liked meeting up with other people on camping weekend so I thought I would start possibly looking into doing a bit more of that um, and Phil at the time was organising a group meetup in Scotland for October so I thought why not chance to meet some more people so I put my name down for that and I would say to anyone out there who's scared of going on a group meet give it a try the small vehicle campus ones have been absolutely brilliant and despite what some people might think, I'm actually really shy. I've always steered clear of big groups, of busy places. Um, I hated parties as a kid, as a teenager and as an adult. It's just not my cup of tea. So um, it took a bit of uh, plucking up courage to go along. It was easier because obviously there was someone there that I knew, but I'd say it was well worth the effort and I really enjoyed it. Okay, so the walk through Watch It, uh, obviously in Somerset. And uh, yep, yeah. oh, he had a nice park up there. There's a big mural running along uh, the harbour. Quite interesting. And try to get some photos. Not very clear because the ground around it hasn't been tarmacked it's just rough ground so couldn't get too close to everything but I hope you get the general idea from looking at this and I'm going to catch up with you in a few minutes after we finish looking around watch it to give you some updates on the channel Here we're going to go for a little walk out onto the harbour wall. Uh, just taking the doggies. It's uh, early in the morning, so not many people around. Some really unusual weathering on the harbour wall. And it's now seven o'clock in the morning and there's the first of the little fishing boats going out. Not a bad day, a bit cloudy, but uh, hopefully it might brighten up later. And just a little look back along the coast and up towards the town. Little beach on the side, quite pebbly and of course looking out onto the channel
Okay, guys, so after a summer spent in Devon and Cornwall, uh, I ventured to Avebury and I went to see the Stones. Uh, enjoyed the hospitality of Phil, who invited me to park upon his drive uh, before heading back to Scotland. And first uh, stop off there was Dumfries and Galloway and then to Clattering Shores where I was joined by Phil and Ruby. We then moved on to have a overnight stop at Greymere's Tail, uh, went up to the waterfall and then on to uh, Fort William. Uh, we made some other little stops along the way. Uh, some of those will feature here, but we went to visit the Core Pack shipwreck. As Phil hadn't uh, been there before. And uh, it is while well we'd uh, been on our way to Fort William that my car broke down for the second time in a week. The first time the exhaust fell off. The second time my rear brakes went. Um, they were binding. My car sounded as though it was playing the bagpipes. So uh, we spent a while wandering around Fort William while the lovely man at the garage sorted it out. And if you drive to Corpac, you can park up at the canal basin and walk up to the shipwreck. It doesn't take more than a few minutes and it's a great view out over Fort William and Ben Nevis. Quite the iconic picture. Everyone seems to want to go and take it. Uh, you will pass Neptune Staircase on the way and you'll also uh, pass the Gem and Fossil Museum and I covered that earlier in the year when I visited uh, and that's well worth taking a look at. Anyway, after we'd been to the shipwreck, the little man from the garage rang to say the brakes were done so we were able to go back pick up the car and we decided to have a further wander around Fort William and uh, we spent a couple of hours just browsing the shops and taking in the statues and the sights. Uh, we had visited the three sisters at Glencoe, taken the usual photos along the way and uh, we'd had a nice evening park up at uh, Glencoe Ski Resort, £5 donation, you've got the showers, the toilets, the cafe all there, so an ideal stopover. We went to the Bridge of Orkey and this time it wasn't in full spate as it was when I visited earlier in the year, so we were able to go for a nice walk and it was actually warm and sunny on this visit. Uh, the trees were visible, not under about 12 foot of water. There was the almost compulsory stop at Tundrum, visited the Green Welly, went to the Real Food Cafe for something to eat and there was a French rally uh, passing through, all parked up and we spent oh, probably about half an hour looking at all the vehicles there and they were really interesting. So, yeah, another stop we made, tourist hotspot of course, Glenfin and Viaduct and uh, on the occasion that we were there it was a wet murky day however uh, we were lucky enough to see the jacobite yeah. passing over the viaduct and we did manage to get a couple of long distance shots just taken from the cafe uh, we didn't walk down there to get any particular photos of it uh, we were just enjoying a cup of coffee and uh, managed to just snap it as it went over the viaduct. Uh, next we moved on to the Falls of Falloch. Come on Lucy. Come on Ted. Come on Lolly. Off we go. Let's go walkies. Oh, and we're walking to the Falls of Falloch. And that's Phil and Ruby. Walking in front. The path. One down through the trees, the one that goes straight on. Looks like we're taking the one that goes straight on. Come on. Come on. 
And I've been here on a previous visit, but as well hadn't we made a quick stop. And there were some brave people swimming in the water there. And anyone who's been will know there's a little walkway that goes out and looks at the other side of the waterfall. And of course we took it in turns because uh, it's quite an open flooring on it which wouldn't have been any use whatsoever with the doggies. Last time I came I had to carry Ted. We had a little park up at uh, Loch Lomond for one night. That was not too busy considering it usually is busy around there. But that was pleasant. Went for a little walk early next morning. And uh, then moved on and did another park up on the side of a lock in an old favourite spot. Obviously I camp in the jazz. Uh, Phil camps at the moment in a Citroen Bilingo. We went to Loch Ness. We also went to the beautiful Loch Fleet where we spent a night on the side of the Loch and watched the seals next morning plus the herons and curlew. And Phil managed to get some nice photos which I've uh, been able to put on here for you to see. And after a night at Loch Fleet, uh, we decided we were going to move on and spend another night at Port Mahomac, which is a lovely little village and uh, some gorgeous sunsets if you get the weather right. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't too bright when we were there, but still a pleasant stay. Went for a nice walk out towards Tarbot Nest Lighthouse and... Uh, I saw quite a few different fungi on the walk. Lots of wildlife and even what appeared to be the wreckage of a remote control plane. Uh, we were then going to move on and we decided to go along the coast, stopping briefly at Nairn and carrying on down to Fraserburgh. Um, we had... Uh, Two nights at the lovely Glen Buckty Motorhome Air and time to explore Fraserburgh and Cairnbog Harbour. After which we worked our way down to the lovely Stonehaven on what was a very, very rough day. And as you can see that, by the sea crashing over the seafront.
Ah, and that's the end of the Stonehaven Sculpture Trail. Ah, we're just going to go for a little walk around the harbour and back through Stonehaven.